Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you haven't noticed already, I've moved everything over to the YouTube Jolly Roger 907 uh, YouTube channel to hopefully kind of streamline all these videos and just make it more shareable and things like that. So on with the uh, build here, building this, uh, the RS Racecraft Skookum 13 kit. Super excited about it. Talked to uh, Ronnie over there at RS Ricecraft about my videos. He was actually kind of happy to see them coming along and wanted to work with me. So uh, we have kind of been uh, in a joint um, project now to help improve their instruction manual and as well, okay, so I'm kind of following along their instruction manual and trying to tie those into these videos. So it's something that uh, future builders can use and hopefully make the whole process easier. So the step that I'm doing today, I have kind of a short day, uh, some family time I'm gonna go do this week on my days off. So I'm only gonna get a few hours in today. I am going to build the uh, the undercarriage, if you will, or the, uh, the deck structure, uh, the engine bearers, and the longitudinal stringers with the uh, cross bracing and stuff like that. So we'll get to, get to work on that. And uh, hopefully here in the next couple days, I will get those uh, videos edited, uploaded onto YouTube, and hopefully start to share those. Thanks uh, again for joining us. Uh, I think all the uh, YouTube vloggers, they always gotta throw in the pitch. Please uh, like the video. Uh, even better yet, subscribe to the channel and allow those notifications so you can get the uh, updates as I upload the content. Thanks for joining us. Alrighty, so on to the understructure. The, the Like I said before, the steel-topped bench is super handy for that, for clamping. As you can see, I took the uh, the engine bearer and used the straight line of the uh, of the bench top to clamp that thing down so that's nice and square and flat to the table and it's not going to move anywhere and i'm using that as the base uh, to start everything off to to anchor to first thing that you want to do or that i wanted to do is the the longitudinal stringer these things are both going to be flush up against the transom so the first thing i did is locate that and then uh, just using a simple um, square Make sure that those things are nice and square to each other so that is going to be butted up against the transom the other thing that i did that wasn't really called for in the instructions was these cross braces with the um, little slot in there there's quite a bit of uh, movement that you can adjust these things i think the end goal is to have them land at the same spot on the outside of the boat so what i did is i made a mark and i can't see that side just because of the I made a small mark on that one to find out exactly where it's supposed to go and then measured a distance out here and clamped a second straight edge to get the exact distance between these two things, ran it all the way down and clamped that edge. That way when I go to set these, they're all at the exact same uh, length to the outside of that. So then when you got that length set up, um, these are obviously gonna find themselves naturally just to the to the, uh, the groove that is cut into those longitudinal stringers. So I just took a small square and so squared it up, pushed it out so it's gonna be hitting that. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and tack these in. All right, got the, uh, the cross members all tacked to the engine bearers. Now my next step is going to locate and tack in the uh, the outside longitudinal stringer. That'll be about it. Um, with the notches that are cut in here, this thing kind of self locates itself. But as you can see, there's still a lot of a lot of a movement to it, as well as uh, the ability to have some have it not straight. I think as it just sits naturally, all aluminum is going to have some kind of a curve to it. So what I'm going to do is clamp a straight edge to it to make sure this thing is nice and straight. And then I will get that tacked into position as well. I hope you can see that that uh, that curve to that aluminum. All what, the way it's understood or explained to me is that when aluminum is made, it's actually rolled out, so all sheets or plate of aluminum is going to have some sort of natural curve. It's important to find what direction that curve is uh, on like outside plates and stuff like that. It's going to help you fabricate and get nice nice flat uh, plate. One thing you can absolutely never have too many of are clamps. So all I did is I just transferred that straight edge that I used over there since those are already uh, located. Took that piece of angle and used that to straighten out this uh, longitudinal with a couple spring clamps. I anchored this down here. Like I said, we made sure that was square to the engine bear. But now look at this. Because of, again, the notches in here, this whole thing can still move quite a bit. 
So what all I did is I'm gonna take a measurement here at the stern, take that and make that match up at the front. That way we'll be all squared and we'll get this thing tacked into. Now that the longitudinals are all tacked in, it is ready to weld out. This thing's pretty simple. Just a couple welds here on the longitudinal, a couple welds along the engine bear. I'm gonna do one other thing is I just clamped a piece of uh, support on here to hold it flat to the table since you can't really get a clamp all that way uh, that far deep into the table so i'm just going to clamp that down i've got the engine bearer nice and clamped down and i'm going to weld these uh, out just a, a couple inch weld i'm going to do it on both sides these middle pieces i think these are the support for the midship uh, frame i'm not going to do a hundred percent weld there just do a couple stitches that should be good enough for that as well as uh, i'm going to weld pretty much these uh these cross pieces into the in engine bear 100%. All right, I decided to flip the, the undercarriage back over on this RS Racecraft Skookum build just to get a little bit better weld angle. And I was also able to clamp it back down. So one of my, the guy I took instruction from at my local community college always told me to clean my smoke after I weld. So this is what it looks like. Like I said, I just did a, a, a quick stitch weld on this uh, larger section. Everything else was 100 percent welded uh, on both sides of those. I welded all the way around the uh, cross sections as well out on the engine bear. So this side is done. This is the starboard side. And the way you can tell that is the uh, two larger holes back here. There's gonna get some aluminum bolts that are bolted in or uh, welded, partially welded into that that are going to hold the fuel tank in. So that's why, how you can identify those. I'll take this off and put the uh, port side on and get that done as well. Well, folks, welcome to the end of, we'll call it day two here on the RS Racecraft Skookum 13 kit build. Just uh, kind of had a short day. I, I think I probably only had two, two and a half hours into this. I've got some things to do this afternoon, but uh, kind of want to at least get something done on it. Probably would have honestly taken me half that time. So a lot of it was kind of uh, figuring out the initial layout, which parts were starboard, which ones were port, and things like that. The biggest thing was the uh, the fuel tank is uh, set up to go on the starboard side. I think the port side, there's also an, an uh, another recess cut in that longitudinal stringer for the uh, water box. Um, figured that out after talking to Ronnie on the phone. Anyway, got some things done. I'll turn the phone around and show you what uh, we got done today. Again, thanks for watching the channel. So here it is, got the bottom side flipped over. I Once we got it flipped over, I was, I was pretty stoked looking at all the seams and everything from the other side for the first time. Man, they're, uh, they're all really tight. That's gonna make the weld out and the strength all that much better. So here's the two independent uh, deck supports or engine bearers. These are just uh, literally just placed in here. Those are going to uh, Got to find their location and get those tacked in and welded in. From the way I understand it, what you do is you put the hydroblaster pump in here and that is, and then a, a, a temporary spot to find with the exact location of the transom that's going to be uh, driven off of where that pump is going to sit. So there it is. This is, like I said, about a, we'll call it end of day two. Uh, really, honestly, about one full day of work, but moving right along. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, and allow those notifications so you can see the uh, uploaded content as this work moves along.